Okay, so uh, our standard format that I'm trying to establish is to go over any known issues and updates first, and then to give some uh, <coughs> demo or talk a little bit about some uh, topic that's been recently interesting to people, and uh, then I will open it up to questions to everyone. So first of all, I did want to talk a little bit about some uh, updates. We, I had told you that last Friday we were going to hear at DOD a few of us receive a demo of the new PALS data set that they have brought into the warehouse. We did get to see that demo. It was really, really good. Uh, there were really only a couple of things that we asked for a couple changes on, and then maybe a few more fields. Uh, we, they had uh, left a few of the things out that were you kind of are accustomed to seeing in the individual monthly summary, some of the, the folders there. And I thought it would be sort of important for us to establish a folder structure that you expect to see. So even if it would be something that you wouldn't use very often, just to know that it would always be there for you to use. Um, this was only pause, so it did not have any claims data. It wouldn't be utilization. But uh, it was of the financials, the, the one they wanted to get done first, and obviously the easiest when it doesn't have all the, the claims and things involved. And so I anticipate that being available pretty soon. I, I haven't done any hands-on testing myself, and so you know I'll have to go through field by field and make sure everything is um, what we expect for it to be. But just from the demo, I, w I was impressed, and I, I think you guys will like to be able to pull that data, um, and it should be available pretty soon. Um, I did want to do a little reminder about the data warehouse mailing list. If you see a message that comes and the subject line is data warehouse mailing list, or if it has this blue uh, graphic at the top of it, just know that that is a mailing list message. I've had quite a few responses where people have thought, and I know when it comes, it looks like it's coming straight from me to you, but I am just sending it to the listserv. And so people say, well, that doesn't apply to me. And as well, you know, you're just on the listserv. And, and, and so I just want to let you know that if you do see the data warehouse mailing list, and I'm going to try to always put that in the subject line and with the date of the message, and I'm going to always try to put this graphic at the top of it so that when you see it, you'll know immediately that that was a listserv message that went out and not something that I sent directly to you. So that's that. Um, let me make sure that the recording is working. It looks, it appears to be, okay, good. So now I want to talk a little bit about filtering for dates and why dates are important. This is probably the most important thing you'll need to know to use the data warehouse accurately. Different of the data packages have different dates and different dating sort of processes. And so I wanted to talk about the three that we have out there now and sort of how to use them appropriately and that sort of thing. So I'm going to flip over here to the data warehouse. And just as a reminder, if you missed the this question and answer session from last week, we did talk a lot about the folder structure and the power users versus regular users. And so if you missed all of that last week, that is uploaded to YouTube and you can watch that when you get a chance. And I went through and I I wrote down the times of the different topics in the session. So if that was really the only thing you wanted to hear about, then you could just go straight to that time and watch it. So I hope that will be helpful to you. So uh, let me go in first to the Medicaid match. Um, I just I did want to show you that if you click on that, it looks like there's nothing here. Uh, but what you can do, you always have to launch it. So you go up under here to launch. Here's your pen, which is your friend. Always click on that, and then it'll actually launch. So this is the Medicaid match report, or the query, that you can uh, build. This one is always only one date. This will be the most recent date that we have the data for. Uh, it is going to be, let me Move through here. Um, this is 
Uh, we receive the feed on the 25th of each month, and then we will publish it at the end of the month when we publish each month individual monthly summary data. But uh, you probably figured out in the individual monthly summary, it, it keeps each week snapshot, and so it sort of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The Medicaid report is always going to be only the most recent of the, because, you know, the, if it changes, you know, the old data is not really that, that helpful to you. And if you did want to know what the old Medicaid number was, you would be able to find it in the monthly summary because that snapshot will still be there. So in this one, you don't have to worry about picking a date. So in that sense, this is kind of the easiest one to use. So let's go to the individual daily summary. So this one will always have at least seven days of data. Uh, I see now it has eight. I'm, I'm not sure if I had thought they were going to cut it off for us at seven, uh, but maybe they're going to take ten or something like that. But and then the old ones will drop off, and so you'll each day you will have the day before its data, and then the days before that. Uh, I have been told by IT that they do reserve uh, some time on the weekends for scheduled downtimes and things like that. And so you might see occasionally that there will be a Saturday or Sunday or something like that where there won't be a snapshot. But in reality, this data doesn't change that much over the weekends anyway. So at first I was like, well, no, I want it every day. But it, it didn't really affect that much because you, you will have all of the weekdays in there. So let me flip back over here so you can see it sort of live. So if I want to switch from the Medicaid match report, I'll go up under here to the home, click on that, and then I can I have two choices. I can either click on the daily summary, and it'll take me to that empty folder, and I can click launch. Or if I wanted to skip a step, I could just go up under here to launch, query studio, and then it'll ask me which one. And it looks the same, sort of, but it's, it's a different location. And then this will launch the daily summary. So you can see in here, if you want to find your dates, it's this second one here. <coughs> and right here is where your dates are. We did add another one in here that is day of the week, because people were wanting to, like, if you want something every Monday, then you could pull in all the Mondays that way or every Friday, or whatever you wanted to do. So let me show you just some sort of examples of, well, let, actually, let me go back out to the, the daily. So I want you to see them all, or the monthly. I want you to sort of see how they all work, and then I'm going to do some demos. So go in here, the monthly summary. Now this one, there is a snapshot taken at the end of every month. And I'll just drag these in here and you can see what all the days are. And so it, they've, been, they've been having it running since the end of June. And so that's the day we use for the you know, fiscal year end and fiscal year beginning is that 6-30-12. And so because of this, that means that if there is someone who's been in our system each one of these months, they're going to have a row in the database for each one of those months. And so if you just simply drag over a count without putting in a date, you will count each person one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So when you're building a report, and I do the same thing, I mean, it, it's, it's something you just have to remember. And when you look at your data, you have to sort of know your data well enough to know if it makes sense or not. Because you, you'll be building your stuff, you know, putting it in, and all of a sudden you'll say, wow, that's a big number. And then you think, oh, I didn't pick a date. And so that's something you'll probably hear from me a million times until you say, oh, I got it already. So let's build a little report. I'm going to take out the dates just so you can sort of see what happens. So let's talk about, well, let's count some people. So if you want to count just people, it's individual monthly summary, and then measures. These are your measures. These are. Um, all of the things that you can count, and I know you guys saw all this in the um, intro video that's out there at YouTube, but I just, in case somebody hasn't seen that or needs a little refresher, it's all here. Monthly summary, measures general, and these are all your counts. So 
I'm going to put in active because you only want to count your people most of the time that are your active people. They're all in here, though. Anybody that you've terminated, anyone who is deceased, they're all in here. And so if you don't um, limit it to just the active people, then it will also overcount people. So that's how many active people in here, but this is our with duplicates. So there's that. Now let's drag in county. So we're just going to see like how many people, active people per county. Uh-oh, I have uh, some stuff in my office. Um, this webinar is probably going to go to like 10.30. Can everyone hold, please? <coughs> sure. Billy! Oh. <laughs> Hello? Ships of Spain, red ships of Spain. I'm so sorry about that, everyone. I had a, I'm the only data person here today, and apparently, you know, with it being prime budget season, they needed something right away. I apologize. Doesn't hope that doesn't happen too often, but I guess it could. Let me see. Where were we? We were talking about uh, individual monthly summary, and so we put in all of our active count people, and now we're going to put in our county. So and I'm going to put in reporting county, just so you remember, we do have reporting county, which would be your IDS county. We have waiver county and waiver funding county. They're almost always the same, but occasionally they're not. And when they're not, it's important to know which. So if you're looking at this already, you're thinking, wow, that's really big. And that's, that's usually when you think, oh, I need, need to put my date in there. So what you can do. Uh, there's a couple different things you can do with the date. You can just drag it in. You can filter by it. You could pivot and put it across the top and show it over time. So I'm going to drag this in here. I'm going to put it between county and active count. And you can see what it'll do is it'll divide it out by each one of the times. So this is a little hard on the eyes. If you wanted to group it by the Adams County, you could click on this column, come up here, and when you hover over these, I'll tell you what they'll do. But this one, the first one here is grouping. So if you click on that, it makes it a lot easier to look at. Uh, so there's that option. Uh, if you wanted to look at it over time, another one of these options up here is to, uh, you can pivot it. So. I would click here to select this column, and it'll just flip it up here. So it is this one, I believe. Yes, see, pivot creates cross tabs. If I click on that one, it'll show you the information over time. So then you can just go across Belmont's active individual count across over time. So I think that's kind of helpful. I mean, you don't want to look at the summary because it's not really that many people. That's just all of the same people, for the most part, added up. So that's just another thing to remember. Uh, 
probably if I really just wanted to run this the way that I would really do it, because I'm doing a lot of sort of, I could do this and then I could do that. But the, the real way I would probably do it, go ahead and clear out of that. So this was to get new. And then it asked me if I wanted to save, and I didn't. But what I would do first is I would really go in here, and I would pick my day that I wanted. So I would, we have this folder to pick dates, and then we also have this one. And it's the same information. It's just that this one is every single month. And we were sort of anticipating that if there's a snapshot taken every month, that eventually it's going to become a little bit unwieldy to deal with. And so they made us a separate one here. And so if you were wanting to do things, um, back in time or pick a certain month without having to go in here and scroll around, then that's just there for you. I usually am still doing this one now because we don't have that many. But if I want to filter for just my day, I'll go here, I'll right click on it, I'll filter it. These are our months we have in here. I'm going to take this newest one, say OK, and you can see up here, this thing indicates it's a filter, it's a little funnel thing. Then this is your month that you selected. So I would do that. And then I would go ahead and just I would drag in my reporting county. So we have our list of counties. And then I would drag in our active count, put it right here. And then there's your answer. And it's not duplicated and all of that stuff. OK, so I'm going to go back to the daily. But before I leave the daily, I'm wondering if any of you have any questions about the monthly. OK, I don't see any hands raised or anything like that. So I'm going to go back to the daily. So to do that, I'm going to click on the home. I don't want to save. Click on the daily, launch it. OK, and I'm going to do sort of a, a similar process in the daily as what I did in the monthly, just so you can see how the duplicates show up. So, and then also let's talk a little bit about the, the different counts. So let's, I used just the active before. I'm going to drag all three of these in at the same time. These are active people. These are the people that are terminated or deceased, and this is just everybody. Uh, if I want to do them all at the same time, I can just click on the general folder up there and drag them all in at the same time. So there those are. OK, now let's talk about waivers. Just something different. So I'm going to come down here, and to the bottom where it says waiver type, and I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put it over here in the front. So this shows IO waivers, level one, self, TDD. And it says unknown, but that really means no waiver. And so you could see that the, the reason I wanted to do it with all the, with the active and the inactive and the total is to show you that when you're working with waivers, you can't use just your active counts because uh, there are some of your counties will have someone, if you are not providing them the services directly, I, I, I'm assuming that's what it must be what it is, but you have people marked as inactive who um, are on waivers. And so you'll undercount your waivers that way if you use active. So you'll probably want to use total for this one so that you have your total count of waivers. So. Looks like we have a lot of waivers right now, doesn't it? And that's because we don't have a date in there. So, but let's do one other thing first. I want to show you how, because um, we are only talking about waivers, we don't care about the unknowns, because um, that's not what we're counting here. So if we want to filter that out, we'll right click on it, filter. And you can either, you can do two things. You can select all and say, I don't want the unknowns. Or you could say, do not show the following. Do not show the following unknown. And so you can see here, filtered out, not waiver type unknown, and you can see they're gone now. So now let's put some dates in. Ordinarily, I would do the dates first, but I just wanted to sort of show you this, this way. You could 
see the big counts. So we're going to go in here under individual daily date, individual daily summary date. I'm going to drag in the, the date field right there and let go. And I'm going to do that grouping thing like we did before. Click here, group it for I.O., and you can see sort of how they change over time. And then I'll do the pivot thing again so you can see how they changed in the past seven, eight days. So I click there, come up here, click on the pivot button up there. So now you can see here are the waivers. And then over time you can see, you know, self waiver is just had two more added yesterday. Because I, I ran this last night uh, when I was looking at this to make sure that these things would work for you guys. And it was 51 and, you know, now it's 53. So but you can see the sort of fluctuations and stuff. I think it's kind of neat to have this, this daily. And I know when we did the demos back in the pilot a while back now, uh, people were saying, well, this monthly thing is great, but I want to see that my changes I made yesterday show up there today. And so that's why we put this together. So I hope that you like this and, and use this. So um, any questions about this part? all pretty much makes sense. I mean, it's just one of those things. You, you will build a report, and you will look at the numbers and think, wow, it's huge, and then you'll remember the date, and that'll happen to you. But at least now you know that it's not that there's way too many people in. It's that usually if you're seeing way too many people, it's either you didn't filter for active and you should have, or you didn't filter for the date. So let's see. We talked about that. Those are the different dates. Um, so here was the monthly. And I just put these in here for the folks that weren't able to watch today so they could sort of see what it looked like. OK, so now I'm going to move into sort of the question and answer part. Uh, I've had a, a few questions uh, regarding the Medicaid report. And I am going to talk about that in a lot more in, more in-depthly uh, after we get the, the new data load. So it'll be the first one of the presentations after the, the new month starts. And so I think that's either the 6th or the 7th. I'm not sure how, um, if it was the Wednesday or the Thursday that week. Uh, but I did want to talk about a couple of things right now. Um, when you're in the Medicaid report, you'll see lots of people, and particularly in this time, where it says that their end date for their Medicaid span is 10-3-2018. And I did go and look up some of those people in MITS directly. And it's actually, sort of strangely enough, it's a different date. But it is another sort of infinity kind of date. So it does mean, yes, they do have an open span right now. Uh, and that, I guess, you don't have to worry about it running out in the very near future. <laughs> but I mean, they, they will go in and get uh, new start dates for their new spans. But I think a lot of people are getting those sort of infinity dates put in there. So it's not a typo. It's not an error. It really does indicate an open span that is, as of this point, endless. Um, OK, next thing I wanted to talk about, uh, the inactive individuals in the Medicaid report. Yeah, I think um, I had a, one or two people contact me. And they were finding people, they were running things on the Medicaid report, and they were saying, I'm finding all these matches that you're saying are, are mismatches or they're errors, and you know, they're not even in my gatekeeper anymore. Or I don't, or they're, they're inactive in my gatekeeper. And that's true. I mean, I, I am sure that that is the case with lots of people, because this, we, as you saw, we have everyone who's ever been in IDS still in the system. And so if you are running a report in the Medicaid report, then one of the filters you'll need to do is if, if you only want the active people to make sure you go in. And here, I'll, let me show you it rather than I'll just tell you about it. There it goes. Um, go back to the Medicaid report here. So 
So if you're writing a report and you only want your active people, then you'll go in here and you have, I would probably recommend doing the yes, no filters just because it makes the most sense. Uh, you, can, you can use active count and you could say I only want people where their active count is one and that means yes. Or you could just say uh, this active individual, right click, filter it, say I only want the active people, and then you'll only get your people that have an active status and IDS as of the last time that it did the, the snapshot, so sometime in the last month. So that, that should help you uh, limit your matches down a whole lot and, and, and help you clean that up and, and find more people that do have open Medicaid cards. Let's see. Someone had asked me, how many super users are there per county and what can they do? Oh, I do want to say that if you guys have other questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and start typing them in because I'm sort of at the end of the questions that I've already been asked before the meeting. But um, the super users, I did talk a whole lot about that in the last session. So you can go and watch over that with a whole, you know, sort of tour bit. But if you, um, just to go over it a little bit more, um, how many super users? Are, our preference is probably one or two or maybe three. I know a few of you snuck in a few extras, but um, I think four is the most that we have in any county, and I don't think we want it to go above that. Uh, they don't have any special data pooling privileges or anything. Everybody has the same access as far as what they can do. It's mainly an administrative role as far as you can move things between the development folders and the production folders, and you can move things from your local county folders to your uh, to the folder where it's shared among all the counties, so that if you have something locally that you've developed that you think is pretty neat and you think maybe everyone would want to use it, then you can submit it so that other people can try it out. So uh, that's really the role of the super user is just someone who specifically in the county area you have a and I'll show you this part again. Um, you have development folders and you have production folders. And we just wanted to make sure that, and you'll only be seeing your own county here, but I'll pick Belmont here. Everybody can save in this development folder. Everybody can save in the my folders. Only the, the power users can move things from development to production. And so by doing that, they're saying, I agree that this report is uh, something that I think everybody would want to be able to use and is not built in such a way that, you know, like, for instance, they make sure that the date field is on if it needs a date field or that kind of thing. Like someone has looked at it and made sure that it's uh, something good for your county to be using. Does that answer your questions related to that? 